evening. May I ask you to please take your seats so we can begin the meeting? Thank you. Just going to give the folks checking in a moment to join us. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. 7 p.m. I'd like to start the Monday, April 22nd, 2024, annual town meeting for the town of Ayer. I'm Jeff Tillotson, the moderator. Start with some introductions here on the stage. Over to my right. They're sitting in a line, I can't tell. <laughs> we have Scott Hood, chairman of the board of selectmen, a select board, excuse me, Janice Livingston, the vice chair of the select board, Sean Copeland, the clerk of the select board. Closest to me is Robert Pontrion, our town manager. Assistant town manager, Carly Antonellis, is sitting in the front row. To my left, Madam Clerk, Susan Copeland, Kurt Fraskowski, the chairman of the finance committee, Andrew Seeley, the vice chair, and Eric Seckman, the clerk. The other members of the finance committee are here in the audience this evening. That's Bob France and Jin Hong. In the front row is Mark Rich, Mark Rich who is the town um, council from KP Law. Matt, excuse me, Robert. Oh, you found it. Good. Thank you. For a moment, we couldn't find the flag. It had been put away. May I ask you all to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag. flag. Of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with justice and justice for all. I still get it wrong. Okay, thank you. Um, do you want to do the return of the line? Yeah, you can do that first. There's an annual tradition at the Springtown meeting. We'd like to acknowledge the people who had commit who. Um, have passed in the last year who had a role in town over the years. And this year, I'd like to keep in our thoughts Donald Wallace, Paul Phil Brown Sr., Barbara Busseau, Patricia Pinder, Gerald Milson, Ann Horgan, Donald Deemer, and Carol Tillis. Thank you. And I'm going to ask Madam Clerk to read the return of the warrant, please. Town of Air, annual town meeting warrant, Air Shirley Regional High School Auditorium, 141 Washington Street, Air, Massachusetts, 01432, April 22nd, 2024, at 7 p.m. Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Middlesex, SS. Greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of Ayr, qualified to vote in town elections and affairs, to meet in the auditorium of the Ayr Shirley Regional High School, located at 141 Washington Street, Ayr, Massachusetts, on Monday, the 22nd day of April, 2024, at seven o'clock in the evening, there and there, to act on the following articles. Hereof fail not and make due return of this warrant with your doings thereof to the town clerk before the date appointed for said meeting, given under our hands the second day of April, A.D. 2024. Scott A. Hood, Chair, Janice L. Livingston, Vice Chair, Sean C. Copeland, Clerk, the Air Select Board. Thank you very much, Susan. I just have to finish that. I'm sorry. Oh, that's right. I did it last year. <laughs> a true copy attest, Susan E. Copeland, town clerk, dated April 5th, 2024, 
As directed in the foregoing warrant, I have this day posted three attested copies in three public places, one of which was the town hall at least seven days before said meeting, all as herein directed. Samuel A. Goodwin, Jr., Constable, date April 5th, 2024. Thank you very much. A couple of other housekeeping announcements, please. During the meeting this evening, other individuals admitted to the floor are town department heads and other town employees who have business on today's warrant. Basically, they can make presentations and answer questions for us. Limits to the floor this evening. Voting members within the red seats. The aisle and the back seat is not for voting members. So if you're going to vote, please come into the red seats. Thank you very much. Um, if you'd like to speak, we have two microphones here in both aisles, one in each aisle. Please approach the microphone so we can go through, and I'll do my best to get them in the order people walked up. When you address the meeting, please clearly state your name and your address. Even if I know you, we still need it for the town record. Thank you. I'll talk about this a little more later on, but we will be doing some articles by consent this evening. We'll be putting similar articles together and uh, when we get to that point, we'll talk about it directly. With that being said, Article 1, salaries of elected officials. To see if the town will vote to fix the salary and compensation of elected officials of the town of Ayer, as provided by Section 108, Chapter 41 of the General Laws, as amended, or take any action thereon or in relation thereto. Moderator, FY25, $586. Select board chair, $2,936. Select board members, there are two of them, $2,619. The assessor's chair at $2,908. And the assessor members, there are two of them, at $2,590 each. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Mr. Hood. I move that the town vote to fix the salary and compensation of the elected officials of the town of Ayers contained in Article 1 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Thank you, Mr. Copeland. Thank you for the second. Thank you, Mr. Hood. It has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please vote aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank I'm sorry? Aye. Thank you. The motion passed. Article 2, contract funding by the Air Police Patrol, excuse me, contract funding, Air Police Patrol Officers Association, the APPOA Patrol Division, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of money to fund the first year cost items of a collective bargaining agreement between the town of Air and the Air Police Patrol Officers Association, the APPOA Patrol Division for the period of July 1st, 2024, through June 30th, 2027, or take any action thereon or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Ms. Livingston. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $63,828 to fund the first year cost items of the Air Police Patrol Officers Association Patrol Division Collective Bargaining Agreement as contained in Article 2 and read by the moderator. Thank Seconded. you. I'm sorry, I believe I heard a second? Yes, seconded. Thank you, Mr. Copeland. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That would be unanimous. Article 3, contract funding, Air Police Patrol Officers Association, APPOA Communications Division, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate or transfer from available funds a sum of money to fund the first year cost items of a collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Air and the Air Police Patrol Officers Association, APPOA, Communications Division, for the period of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2027, or take any action thereon or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Copeland. 
I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $35,793 to fund the first year cost items of the Air Police Patrol Officers Association Communications Division Collective Bargaining Agreement as contained in Article 3 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Thank you, Mr. Copeland. Thank you, Ms. Livingston, for the second. Excuse me. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Article 4 is the omnibus budget. I will be reading the major categories. If you'd like to come back to one, please say the word hold or pass as I go through it. Article 4, FY 2025 Omnibus Budget. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate a sum of money for the FY 2025 Omnibus Budget items or take any action thereon or relation thereto. Moderator? Yes, Mr. Um, Hood. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of eighteen million nine hundred sixty-two dollars two hundred fifty or sorry, eighteen million nine hundred sixty-two thousand two hundred fifty-seven to fund the FY twenty twenty-five omnibus budget as contained in Article Four and read by the moderator. Seconded. Second. Uh, thank you for the motion and second. So I'm gonna go through the departments now quickly. Department one, general government, one million one hundred eighty eight thousand one hundred and twenty four thousand oh, dollars. I'm sorry, one hundred and twenty four dollars. Department two, finance, seven million four hundred and two thousand two hundred and thirty one dollars. Department three hundred, public safety, six million four hundred and sixty thousand five hundred and twenty six dollars. Department four hundred, public works. One million eight hundred four thousand eight hundred ninety one dollars. Department five hundred human services. One million four hundred one thousand one hundred four dollars. Excuse me. Department six hundred management support. Seven hundred five thousand three hundred eighty one dollars for the total of eighteen million nine hundred sixty two dollars two hundred nine hundred sixty two thousand two hundred fifty seven dollars. Any discussion? Hearing hmm? Are you going to read each line? Um, I was not, would you like me? I, I was not intending to read each line. I was reading each, cat, each department category. I'm happy to read each line. Mm -hmm. Feeling of the crowd? Thank you. Right. <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm happy. <laughs> I get to drone on a lot as it is. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Article 4 passes unanimously. Thank you. Article 5, FY 2025, Ayer Shirley Regional School District Assessment. To see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 13 million. $379,402 as required to fund the town's FY 2025 assessment for the Ayer Shirley Regional School District and to raise and appropriate the sum of $992,710 for the town's portion of the ASRSD High School Building Project and Fields Project Debt Service or take any action thereon or in relation, or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Ms. Livingston. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $13,379,402 to fund the town's FY 2025 assessment for the Air Shirley Regional School District and to raise and appropriate the sum of $992,710 to fund the town's portion of the Air Shirley Regional School District's high school building and fields project debt service as contained in Article 5 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second, Ed. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole, can I ask you to lean to the mic when you speak? Yes. Thank you. It's moved and seconded. Any discussion on Article 5? Mm -hmm. 
Um, yes, would you please approach the mic, the microphone? It was my understanding that the school committee was going to be giving a presentation which would be requested by the select board. Mr. Moderator? Yes, of course, Mr. Brunfrian. Through you, um, Dr. Renda, the superintendent of schools for the Air Shirley Regional School District, does have a brief presentation on the budget. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I'm sorry, was that Mr. Curran? It was. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. We were, we were going to get there. But thank you very much. I'm not trying to steamroll the whole thing tonight. Dr. Renda, thank you. Good evening. Please excuse my voice. I'm, I'm getting over a cold. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to present to you tonight at the town meeting. With me is Mr. Plunkett, the Director of Finance. Next slide, please. First, I would like to share with you our school district's vision, and that is to create a dynamic, engaged learning community that provides equitable access and opportunities for all members and empowers students to achieve at high levels by fostering intellectual rigor, creative expression, social emotional well-being, and the agency to pursue meaningful paths and thrive as responsible citizens. Thank you. Thank you. And just some highlights for the year, and these are, these are broad throughout the district, but currently both of our elementary and middle schools have started a new evidence-based reading programs that are aligned with the science of reading that was largely funded through a grant through the Department of Ed. We have universal mental health screenings available at all of our schools. Air Shirley Regional High School was recognized as a national champion in unified schools by the Special Olympics of Massachusetts. And in fact, we have unified sports happening in all schools in the district. We have a partnership with the Boston Food Hub through the USDA Farm to School Grant to provide fresh and local grown produce for our school meals. And our high school robotics team, Andromeda One, Team 4905, has been recognized as one of New England's top teams, winning prestigious awards and qualifying for the New England Championship, and we are sure that they are also going to qualify for the national championship. We also have the introduction of a middle school track program, which is boosting participation across grades six through eight and will only feed into our, what is an already exceptional high school track program. Thank you. Next, just briefly, um, I wanted to let you know what our district enrollment is. We currently have 1,717 students enrolled in our Shirley Regional School District. There's 412 students at the high school, 379 students at the middle school, Laura White has 356 students, and Paige Hilltop has 540. Mr. Plunkett will be doing a couple of these slides. Thank you. This is an overview of our current FY24 budget, and it's a high-level uh, roll-up for all of our accounts uh, through our whole budget uh, into four categories, salary, services, other expense and supplies. And you can see by the visual here in the pie chart, 64% uh, of our budget is for salary and fringe benefits. Uh, so that's a key element and one of our biggest drivers. Next slide is the, the detail on the drivers. And I apologize, I discovered a, a, an error on the spreadsheet in the top revenue section, uh, row five transfers from E&D. You see a $300,000 transfer in FY24. Uh, the school committee approved the transfer of E&D of $350,000 uh, on uh, March 27th. So that gonna uh, result in an increase of that 78,582 is gonna go to 128,582. Uh, so I, I apologize for that. Uh, I noticed it after we had already uh, handed out the, the uh, uh, pamphlets for today the handouts. The middle section, so that's our uh, FY25 uh, revenue compared to our FY24. Like I said, it's gonna be about 120, uh, 128,000 more than last year. Uh, the middle section are our cost drivers, our expenditures. Uh, of course, we have uh, health insurance uh, for our employees. Uh, we had to put it in for about a 6.6 .6 increase. Regular transportation and sped transportation are both drivers uh, with costs going up. Contract increases for all salaries, as uh, we are looking for an increase of 268,000. We have our teachers contract uh, going into the last year, uh, which is a 4% increase, a 4% COLA, and then steps if the uh, teachers are uh, eligible for the steps. So 
Uh, most of our drivers are salary and fringe. We also have our ESSER three positions, uh, $250,000 we're asking for. Uh, for the positions that were added after COVID for behavior, uh, counseling, uh, medical, and interventionists for math and reading, uh, we did uh, realize quite a bit of learning loss coming back from COVID and the federal funding, uh, the American Rescue Plan uh, was hoping that we would spend that money, uh, the f those federal funds on those type of social emotional uh, uh, services for our kids. Uh, so we are asking for 250,000 uh, for those positions as well. The bottom section is two of our uh, largest revolving funds, school choice and circuit breaker. Those do not go into the assessment. We use those to uh, budget for salaries in addition to the salaries we have in the general fund. Uh, school choice we use for salaries and circuit breaker is for our out of district special education tuitions. We use that uh, specifically for those tuitions for kids that uh, we have to service outside the district. Next slide. <clears throat> so I'm sure many, many of you are aware that many school districts are facing a budget shortfall this year and some of our neighboring, na excuse me, neighboring districts are attempting overrides to compensate for the state and federal funding that are not keeping up with inflation and the end of the elementary and secondary school emergency relief funding. This was funding to help students and schools with the effects of the pandemic. To complicate this for Aaron Shirley, we are victims of our own success. The regional school districts have seen a cut in both federal entitlement grants and state chapter 70 funds because property values are rising and the percentage of economically disadvantaged students in our district is decreasing. When this happens, the state and federal government expects the towns to pay more. For Aaron Shirley, this has created a $768,000 shortfall. And we need this money to keep the current mental health and social emotional supports that are in place for our students. Rather than seek an override, we're attempting to phase the, these positions into the general fund over the next three to five years. To make this transition possible, the regional school committee has approved the $350,000 from e and Excess and Deficiency Funds, which is an account regional school districts have for emergency needs. In the past, this has been used for an oil spill at Page Hilltop, and more recently, for a high school gym repair when a fiberglass panel had fallen out two winters ago. We are asking the towns for an additional $250,000. Ayers portion of this would be $142,500, and Shirley's portion of this would be $107,500. The school district has made up the difference between the $600,000 through E&D and the $250,000 that we're asking from the towns through competitive grants and some reallocation of other resources. Next slide, please. We did want to share the most recent average teacher salary comparison from the Department of Ed, which unfortunately is from 2021, but still rings true. On this list, you'll see districts that border us and districts that the Department of Ed has identified as being most closely comparable to Aaron Shirley. As you can see, Aaron Shirley is the fourth lowest salary on this list, with the districts who are lower being about 20 minutes or further more west than us on Route 2. You will also notice that districts that border us are paying $9,000 or more on average on their average salary. So though most of our, uh, the biggest portion of our budget is for salaries and benefits, it really isn't comparable to the towns that we are surrounded by. And this isn't the reason for the increase that we are asking for. Next slide, please. Foundation, enrollment, and the RLC, the required local contribution. That's the largest piece of the assessment to the towns, and it's set by the state. It's set by the DOR and the DLS uh, based on the town's ability to pay. Uh, they do this by uh, factoring in real estate values, income, and they come up with a growth factor that they multiply uh, the prior year's required local contribution by based on that growth rate. So um, AIR, um, the first piece is the enrollment, and you can see we have FY24 again compared to FY25. Uh, AIR has 972 students. Foundation enrollment is all the students that the town of Ayer is responsible for. Uh, if they're enrolled in ASRSD, 
or if they're a choice out or a charter out. They're all included in that en enrollment. It's not just the actual enrollment from the uh, uh, Air Shirley district. Uh, so the foundation enrollment is up one student, uh, but that $648,000 uh, number all the way to the right for the change from FY24 to 25 is a 7% increase, and that's based on AIR's ability to pay. So that is set by the state, uh, and it becomes the largest part of um, uh, the assessment. On to the next slide, we have our budget totals. And this compares uh, FY25 to our last two fiscal years. And uh, the first two columns uh, are our uh, appropriated budget. The uh, cost centers you can see for central office, business risk management, those are all our cost centers that are involved in the assessment and the uh, appropriated budget. So we have uh, 20, uh, 29,000. 971,768 for the, the first subtotal of all those cost centers. We add in the transportation and the debt to get a subtotal of $33,424,772. We subtract the, the revenue is the next uh, section. Uh, the state revenue is subtracted from our um, appropriated or our uh, operating budget. And that leaves the assessment piece. The assessment piece is $23,729,953. Um, it's pretty straightforward calculation, uh, but uh, it doesn't include all of our accounts. We have below, you'll see our revolving funds and our grant funds are also used in our budget. Um, and the grand total of all total of all uh, accounts together is $36,732,480. It's a 3.5% increase overall with the use of our general funds and our revolving funds and our, our grants. And the uh, operating budget is a 3.8% increase. Uh, and the S assessment to uh, both Air and Shirley is a 4.9% increase over the prior year. And this next slide shows the detail of the assessment. Row one is a required local contribution. Again, it's set by the state. Uh, they set at 9.7 million for AIR. Uh, AIR and Shirley contribute above the RLC. So rows number two and three uh, are the only uh, portions of the assessment that are allocated by the regional agreement. The regional agreement is a five-year rolling foundation average, foundation enrollment average. And the current breakdown is 57% uh, to AIR and 43% to Shirley. So transportation and the net above RLC are the only two components. About 6.3 million, 20% of the assessment is uh, allocated via the, uh, the regional agreement. The first numbers we had in the warrant, uh, 13 for, uh, for AIR, 13 million, 379. $1,402 is an increase of 811548 over the prior year, 6.5% increase. And remember that RLC increase was 7% on its own. Uh, we've added in the debt uh, for the field projects and the high school renovation, uh, both secondary schools. So the calculation is a little bit different uh, uh, per the regional agreement. We have a uh, blended 50% resident 50% foundation enrollment uh, for, the, for the high school debt. Uh, so that is added into the uh, operating assessment for a total of $14,372,112 uh, for the town of Air, uh, an increase of $817,044, 6 percent increase uh, to the assessment. And the last slide shows you a visual of the required local contribution uh, being the biggest chunk, 71% of the assessment. And then the amount above RLC and transportation is 29%. Um, and, and those are a portion as according to the regional agreement. And that concludes our presentation. Are there any questions at this point? 
I was going to say, are there any questions from the meeting for Dr. Renda? Seeing none, thank you, Dr. Renda. It's been moved and seconded. We've had the presentation. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Article 6. Fiscal year 2025, <coughs> Neshoba Valley Technical High School Assessment to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,074,675 required to fund the town's FY <clears throat> 2025 assessment for the Neshoba Valley Technical High School or take any action therein or in relationship in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Copeland. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1,074,675 to fund the fiscal year 2025 assessment for the Neshoba Valley Technical High School as contained in Article 6 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the second, Ms. Livingston. Dr. Pigeon, before Dennis, you get up. Dr. Pigeon is here for a uh, presentation. Thank you. Good evening and thank you. Uh, my name is Denise Pigeon. I'm the superintendent of Neshoba Valley Technical School District. With me tonight, I have Chris Prail, a member of our school committee, and Corey Prail, another member of our school committee, and some members of our business office staff. Um, as you know, Neshoba Valley Tech is proud to be um, your vocational technical school option for your high school students. We are a regional high school located in Westford, Mass. We serve the towns of Ayer, Chelmsford, Groton, Littleton, Pep Pepperell, Shirley, Townsend, and Westford. Next slide, please. Um, we offer technical programs in um, three different major career cluster areas. Um, just as a point of interest for those of you in the room, um, construction and transportation, 50% of the students from AIR that are attending the Shoba Tech are participating in the construction and transportation programs at our school, 33% in health and services cluster, and 17% in arts and technology. Um, AIR has been a, an official member of our school district since 2012, but you have been um, partnering with us for many, many years beyond that. Um, last year, you actually hit your enrollment high at Neshoba Tech with 69 students attending. Um, this year, there was a slight decrease in enrollment, and you have 63 students attending Neshoba Tech, which is down six students from last year. Um, big picture at Neshoba Tech, um, and this is not unique to Neshoba. This is actually happening at vocational schools everywhere. There has been a great increase in, in interest in participating in a vocational education. Um, our overall district enrollment is up 42 students overall. Um, but again, this year, uh, as it works out, AIR is, is slightly down with six students. Um, AIR's overall portion of the population at Neshoba Tech is just over 8%. Um, and this becomes a factor in how we calculate the assessment in terms of, of how much the town of AIR pays for Neshoba Tech. It's based on your student population. Next slide. Um, in terms of our budget drivers, not all that different from, from what you would hear from um, your, your sending your Air Shirley district and other school districts around the Commonwealth. Um, we have seen an increase in need, in particular in serving students with disabilities. Um, we've needed an increase in our budget to support students with case <coughs> management, um, behavior specialist supports, registered behavior technician support. Um, we've also had increases in several of our, of our annual contracts, including transportation. Um, and in terms of capital, we are an aging building. Our building is over 50 years old. We've done a really good job keeping the building up. We partner with our technical programs when we can. Um, and we are now, um, this budget proposal, FY25, um, does have a capital project to fund phase two of a fire suppression system um, complete uh, renovation. So instead of trying to do the fire su suppression system all in one year, we've broken it into five phases and we are moving into phase two in this particular budget. Um, the good news, next slide. Uh, we have worked really hard and been very aggressive with applying for competitive grants. 
Um, the state has had many over the last several years competitive grants that were really geared for vocational schools in order to be able to upgrade our technical equipment. Um, as you know, educating in a technical environment is very different than in, in educating in an <coughs> academic environment. The tools and the equipment that is required is just significantly different. We have been very successful with obtaining um, competitive grants. This has helped to offset our costs over the years and will continue to provide savings for our towns moving forward. Um, I really want to point out a few that are um, very, very special. We are currently implementing a $2.5 million state grant to um, renovate and expand vet assisting and electrical technology, two of our fastest growing programs at the Tech. Um, in addition to that, we've recently been awarded a $3.75 million grant and we're actually able to completely grant funded add um, 7,000 square feet of an additional instructional space for our students and, and that um, project is underway. In terms of how we compare to our, um, to our sister schools, 29 regional vocational schools across the state, our cost per pupil is actually on the low end. In comparison, you can see that we're actually 26 out of 29. Next slide. Um, I apologize, I know there's a lot of numbers on this slide, but big picture, this is our, um, our year over year budget increase. Um, again, the budget drivers that we discussed, the case management positions, the um, special education supports, most of the increases in our budget are in the, the categories of the 2000s, which is instructional services, and 3000s, which is pupil supports, um, and that is to support those needs that we discussed. Next slide. Um, looking at it in a, in a picture format, if you add up the 2000s, which is your instructors, or your, your staffing, um, the 3000s are direct pupil services, and then the benefits that go along with it, more than 75% of our budget is spent on direct services to students. In terms of revenue, when it comes to a regional vocational school, our revenue comes from basically two major buckets. You have the funding that comes not directly from town assessments, and that's up at the top, your non-assessment revenue. Um, and then you have the, the funding that comes directly from the towns. So we do get some money directly from the state, that's called Chapter 70 School Aid. Ours is increasing, and that's primarily due to the increase in enrollment that we've experienced. Um, in addition, we get some funding reimbursement for transportation, and we do use some of our one-time funds, including excess and deficiency. Next slide. Um, I like this slide because it helps to, I think, put into perspective what the towns are paying for. So in the orange, um, what you can basically see is our total budget, 66% of our total budget is funded by our eight towns. So AIR pays a portion of the 66% of our budget. Next slide. Um, again, a lot of numbers, but this is how you can see what happens with the eight towns. So the way the, the assessment is calculated, it begins with your enrollment, town enrollment. Um, increase, decrease. The first column, um, or the, I'm sorry, the third column, town's minimum contribution, that is not a, a number that Neshoba Tech calculates. The state actually gives us that number, and I'll explain it in more detail for air in a future slide. Um, but the rest of the numbers, transportation, additional assessment, debt service, is all calculated based on your enrollment at Neshoba Tech. Next slide, please. So this is looking year over year at all towns. So we've increased by 42 district students. Our state's um, minimum required contribution, the formula that's calculated by the state, not by Neshoba Tech, has gone way up, um, $871,484. Again, that's because of our overall increase in enrollment. Um, carried across, we have just a, a slight increase in transportation and capital. That's a $25,000 increase in our capital ask that is part of that fire suppression project. Um, and the remaining increase is in transportation contract costs. And our debt service has actually gone down slightly. Um, we have two pieces of debt on the books. One is for a major building renovation that we did back in 2003. That's actually getting pretty close to being paid off. Um, and the other is a roof project that we did several years ago. The next slide is very specific to AIR. Um, again, you can see AIR's enrollment went from 69 students down to 63. So you've had a decrease in students. That decrease in students has actually led to a slight decrease in your required minimum contribution calculated by the state. And because of that, you've also had a slight decrease in your transportation and capital um, request, additional assessment all the way across. So from last year to this year, your, your assessment um, has actually decreased by $61,995. Um, just a few things I'd like to share. We do participate in what's called the CTI program or Career and Technical Initiative. 
It's a state-funded program for adult retraining and vocational education. We're running several cohorts. So if you're aware of anybody in the region um, that is actually interested in, in seeking additional training and looking for employment, um, this is an amazing opportunity. It, it runs in the evening. Some of the programs run on Saturdays. And they do include um, help getting placed in a job when you complete the program after the 200 hours. We've had several cohorts complete, um, and we've heard, we'd heard, we've heard great things about the program. And again, it is state funded. And as always, there's a lot of our programs that are open to the public. We'd love for you to come down and try our restaurant. Um, Cosmo Cuts is also open for service. Uh, we also serve automotive vehicles in, in our automotive technology and in our auto body programs. So please take advantage of our public services. Thank you, and I'm glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc, Dr. Pigeon. Are there any questions for Dr. Pigeon? You get to go home early, doctor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Article 7, 8, 9, and 10 are the proposal we do by consent. And instead of me reading the mo article and then a person making the motion, which is the exact same words, I'm going to ask the motions to be read and seconded. Save us a little bit of time. Mr. Moderator, I move that town meeting vote to approve Article 7, 8, 9, and 10 as printed in the warrant by consent. Seconded. Second. Do I have a second? It is second. second. I, sorry, I didn't hear it. So. Seconded. Thank you very much. Any discussion on Article 7, 8, 9, and 10? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes you eight, excuse me, articles seven, eight, nine, and ten pass unanimously. Thank you. Article 11, so borrow article. It's a long one. Article 11, capital budget requests, borrow. To see if the town will vote to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow the sum set out on the warrant and hereby listed for the purposes of funding the following equipment, services, and public works projects and all costs incidental or related thereto as contained in the capital budget or take any action thereon or in relation thereto. I'm going to go down quickly, guys. Department, and we can ask questions if you would like. Department, DPW, municipal tractor, sidewalk, snow plow, $190,000. DPW, road paving, $95,000. DPW, stormwater, stormwater drain upgrades, $230,000. Stormwater culvert improvements, $130,000. DPW, wastewater, wastewater treatment plant upgrades, $4 million. Inflow infiltration repairs, $750,000. Wastewater pump station upgrades, $500,000. Right way in, that's for White Way in Bennett's Brook, excuse me. Wastewater pump station generator connections, $80,000. DPW, water. Spectacle pond, spectacle pond, well three pumping station and transmission main, $350,000. Annual water main rehabilitation, $300,000. Grove pond, GAC, media replacement, $100,000. Six wheel dump truck, $95,000. Spectacle pond, plant chlorine chemical skid, $75,000. Ambulance. Replace ambulance number two, $550,000. Cardiac monitor, $55,600. An IV pump for $12,700. Fire, a firearm alarm receiver, 57803. Police, chief deputy administrator furniture, $64,000. For grand total of $7,635,103. I'm sorry, $7,635,103. Mr. Moderator. Ms. Livingston. I move that the town vote to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the select board to, appro to borrow the to total sum of $7,635,103 for the purposes of funding the equipment, services, and projects as contained in Article 11 and read by the moderator, provided, however, that the Grove Pound GAC media replacement shall be replaced with the Spectacle Pond media replacement. Seconded. 
Thank you. Anybody have questions or would like a presentation? We can get a brief presentation if needed. Seeing no requests, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Article 11 passes unanimously. Thank you. Article 12, capital budget request, capital stabilization. To see if the town will vote to transfer from capital stabilization the following sums hereby listed for the purpose of funding the following equipment, services, and public works projects, including all costs incidental or related thereto, as contained in the capital budget, or take any action thereon or relation thereto. Again, I'm going to go through this quickly. Department DPW stormwater items, stormwater biofiltration outfall improvements, $50,000. Facilities, town hall building repairs and panic system, $45,000. Parking lot repairs for fire and police, $43,000. Green Community Grant Matching Fund, $40,000. Library, sidewalk and exterior repairs, $25,000. Park utility vehicle, $25,000 for a total of $228,000. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Copeland. I move that the town vote to transfer the total sum of $228,000 from capital stabilization for the purpose of funding the equipment, services, and projects contained in Article 12 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Passed unanimously. <clears throat> Similar to articles 7 through 10, I'm going to take articles 13 and 14 up by consent. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Hood. I move that town meeting vote to approve articles 13 and 14 as printed in the warrant by consent. Seconded. Seconded. Any discussion on 13 and 14? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Articles 13 and 14 pass unanimously. Article 15, transfer of free cash into the town's special revenue fund for opioid settlement Funds in accordance with Chapter 77 of the Acts of 2023. Excuse me. <coughs> to see if the town will vote in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 77 of the Acts of 2023 to transfer the sum of seven million nine hundred twenty-four thousand, sorry, seven thousand nine hundred twenty-four dollars and twenty-five cents from free cash. <coughs> such amount equivalent to the to that received by the town. <coughs> Excuse me, for settlements of the nationwide opi opioid litigation matters to a special opioid settlement revenue fund approved by the Director of Accounts pursuant to said Chapter 77, which fund may be, thank you very much, Robert. Excuse me. Fund approved by the Director of Accounts pursuant to said Chapter 77 which fund may be expended without further appropriation for all the purposes allowed by law, including those outlined in apl applicable opioid litigation settlement documents, or take any action thereon or in relation thereto? Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Copeland. I move that the town vote to transfer $7,924.25 from free cash into the town's special revenue fund for opioid settlement funds in accordance with Chapter 77 of the Acts of 2023 as contained in Article 15 and read by the moderator. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hood, for the second. Any discussion? Mr. Moderator? Yes, sir. I just have a very brief uh, presentation outlining this article. Please do. Thank you. Perfect. Good evening. So Article 15, um, the transfer of free cash into the town's special revenue fund for opioid settlement funds. Next slide. So as many of you may have heard, but to give a background to the article, the town of Ayer is currently par party to various nationwide opioid class action lawsuits, which are geared towards suing the major distributors of opioids. And as these various lawsuits are settled, the town of Ayer will receive settlement funds as determined by the court in a court-approved uh, formula. Uh, chapter 77 of the Acts of 2023 
as mentioned in the article, allows the town to have a special revenue fund for these funds to be held. So as these funds come in, they go into this special revenue fund, which is under the select board, which requires a vote of the select board, and in this case, also subject to review of the director uh, of accounts at the DOR. So it, it, there is a process um, to use these funds. Next slide. So what can the funds be used for? This is set forth, and you can find this information on uh, the state uh, webpage um, on, under the Commonwealth of Massachusetts um, on the opioid funds. What can they be used for? And there are specific categories, opioid use disorder treatment, support people in treatment and recovery, connections to care, harm reduction, address the needs of criminal justice involved persons, support pregnant or parenting women in their families, prevent misuse of opioids and implement prevention education. So these are the areas defined by the court and there are multiple examples and options under each of these categories. Next slide. So the funds for AIR. So the town of AIR is expected to receive a total of $67,560 between 2020, 2022 through 2040. So as you can see, it, it's smaller print, but as these suits are settled, there are time periods set by the court for them to be um, paid out. Um, for example, um, the one against um, CVS uh, is a 10-year payout starting in early 2024. So the key point is to date of the $67,560 expected, the town has received $16,532 to date um, that have been received uh, for the fund. Next. So in FY 2023, we received the 7,924 and 25 cents that's in the warrant. We received those funds, but at that time we couldn't establish the special revenue account, so it fell to free cash. So what we're asking town meeting to do tonight with Article 15 is to transfer that money from the free cash into the special revenue um, fund. And that's exactly what the article would do. And then moving forward, including the FY24 funds received in the amount of $8,608 that we've received this year, all future settlement funds will be deposited into the special revenue fund. And again, I want to stress that the special revenue fund is under the select board uh, with a public process subject to review by the Department of Revenue. Next. So what will we use AIRS funds for? And the key point is that's to, to be to be determined with your input. An internal working group met initially to look at town departmental needs that consisted of the chiefs, the town social worker, the chair of the board of health, myself as town manager, the assistant town manager, finance manager, and town accountant. And in that initial meeting, it was discussed and it is strongly encouraged that there's a public process. So we are looking to schedule in the very near future a public information an input meeting to be convened for public input and other stakeholder ideas because in addition to the town being able to use these funds, we can partner with the state, we can partner with other towns, and we can partner with other entities um, in the town as well, um, as mentioned here. And so that's what we're looking to do in terms of, of next steps. There have been no decisions made for the funding. We want to have the public, your input, and have a public uh, process with that. And then ultimately, the select board uh, would look to those recommendations and act uh, uh, moving forward. So with that, Mr. Moderator, just point out again, if you go to mass.gov and type in um, opioid settlement abatements, there's a wealth of information, or my office would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Pontbion, for laying that out. <clears throat> any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 16, Stabilization Fund. To see if the town will vote to transfer $1,234,740.75 from free cash 
or such other sum or sums of money with $584,740.75 to be credited to the stabilization fund under the provisions of Chapter 40, Section 5B of the General Laws, and $650,000 to be credited to the Capital Stabilization Fund for the town's financial policies, or take any action therein or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Hood. I move that the town vote to transfer $1,234,740.75 from free cash with $584,740.75 to be credited to the Stabilization Fund and $650,000 to be credited to the Capital Stabilization Fund as contained in Article 16 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Second. <laughs> Thank you for the second. We'll have to decide who to give it to, you to later. Thank you. Ms. Livingston. Hmm? Any um, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 16 passes unanimously. I'd like to take up Articles 17 and 18 by consent together. Mr. Moderator? Yes, Mr. Hood. I move the town meeting vote to approve Articles 17 and 18 as printed in the warrant by consent. Seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? 17 and 18. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Article 17 and 18 pass unanimously. Article 19. Funding for aquatic reed, weed control for town ponds. That's a hard one to say. <laughs> to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 for the purpose of funding the aquatic weed control program for the town's ponds and any incidental and related costs and expenses or take any action thereon or in relation thereto. Funds are to be spent by June 30th, 2027, unexpended funds on June 30th, 2027, to close and revert to the general fund balance. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Hood. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $25,000 for the purpose of funding the aquatic weed control program for the town's ponds as contained in Article 19 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. Excuse me, kids. Could you go to the microphone, please? Uh, my name is Anna Mayer on 9 Mountain Laurel Road in Air. Um, and I just wondered if the 25000 was based on any sort of plan for the um, aquatic weed control program or is an estimate for a certain plan. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask Heather Hampson, the town's... Um, Thank you. I, I blanked conservation <laughs> agent to uh, yeah. uh, answer the question for yeah, you. So um, the, the funds based on the amount of the um, current contract that we have, which is I think the total amount of 27,000, there is still funds left over from previous years to contract that. But going forward to next year, we will deplete some of that funds that are in there. We need to have enough money when the contract is signed, which is prior to town meeting, to ensure that we can fund that full contract. So that's what that money is for. It's based on previous contracts. For doing weed control. Uh, we currently use chemical um, weed control. We have researched other sources, other different types of controls, um, and unfortunately those are in the $100,000 range, if not more. So this is the most affordable one, we, and that's per pond, not for all four or five, that four, three that we do now. Um, when I researched other ones, the, the non-chemical route was around $100,000 for one. Thank you, Heather. Okay. Thank you. Other questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Article 19 passes. Article 20. Matching. Sorry, matching funding for firefighters grant to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $7,105.23 
as matching funds for a federal assistance to firefighters grant or take any action there on in relation thereto? Mr. Moderator. Ms. Livingston. I move that the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $7,105.23 as matching funds for a federal assistance to firefighters grant as it contained in Article 20 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Thank you for the second, Mr. Mr. Uh, Copeland. Any discussion? Seeing, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Article 20 passes unanimously. Article 21, Community Preserva Preservation Act. To see if the town will hear and act on the report of the Community Preservation Committee on the fiscal year 2025 Preservation Act budget and appropriate from the estimated fiscal year 2025 Community Preservation Fund revenues a sum of money equal to 5% and not to exceed $48,454 to meet the administrative expenses and all the necessary and proper expenses of the Community Preservation Committee for fiscal year 2025 and further, to reserve for future appropriation from the estimated FY 2024 Community Preservation Fund revenues the following sums of money as recommended by the Community Preservation Committee for each of the following purposes. A sum of money equal to $96,909, 10%, more or less, for acquisition, creation, and preservation of open space, excluding land for recreational use. And a sum of money equal to $96,909, 10%, more or less, for acquisition, preservation, restoration, and rehabilitation of historic resources, and a sum of money equal to $96,909, 10%, more or less, for acquisition, creation, and preservation and support of community housing. And the remaining, remainder sum of $629,970, 70%, less administrative expenses, for the undesignated fund balance or take any action therein, thereon or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Copeland. I move that the town vote to appropriate the estimated fiscal year 2025 community preservation funds as follows. $48,454 to meet the administrative expenses and all other necessary and proper expenses for the community preservation committee for fiscal year 2025. $96,909 for reserve for acquisition, creation, and preservation of open space, excluding land for recreational use. $96,909 for reserve for acquisitions, preservation, restoration, and rehabilitation of historic resources. $96,909 for reserve for acquisition, preservation, and support of community housing. $600 $29,907 for the undesignated fund balance as contained in Article 21 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Thank you. The second, Ms. Livingston. We have a presentation if you would like. It's a short one, I promise. Janet, do you mind, please? This is Janet Povedakis, who's the current chair of the CPC. Thank you, Janet. I thank you, everybody. Um, if we, all right, this is who we are. Um, next slide, please. <laughs> okay, what we received from the 3% surcharge on property tax plus the state estimate was $969,090, all right? Um, the state, again, when we did the 3%, uh, the state will give us a second and third um, bump in the percentage amount. However, what the state ended up doing is the lower amount. So we only got approximately, uh, I think it's like almost 30% from the state as a match. But that's how we get the total. From that total, it's required by law that we have to put 10% in each one of those three buckets, open space, uh, community housing, and historic. The rest of it goes inside the um, undesignated reserve because this way here, once it's inside one of those three categories, if we have a request that comes in for anything additional than what's in that category, it has to come out of a, an, an, un, you know, an undesignated reserve. 
So that's the reason why there is a big amount there. When you look at the administrative expense, whatever we don't spend goes back into the undesignated reserve. So last year, even though we asked for the 5%, we had three different appraisals. We also had legal notices and such that we had to pay for. So with that, all that rest of the money that we put aside for last year got put back in, and then that's what's gonna end up happening again this year. So we have something that we can go and ask very quickly if we need to do an appraisal. All right, that gives you an idea for this warrant article. Any? Any questions for Ms. Provodakis? Thank you very much, Jen. <laughs> Make me <laughs> <laughs> hey, what would we do without the glue? <laughs> Thank you. So, um, all in favor of Article 21? Aye. 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 Opposed? Article 21 passes unanimously. Thank you very much, Janet. Again. Thank you. Article 22, Community Preservation Fund transfer of unexpended funds from old fire station project. To see if the town will vote to transfer the unexpended sum of $190,000 from the Community Preservation Fund project for the old fire station project as originally appropriated by Article 27 of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting to the following CPA Reserve Funds as follows. $150,000 to the CPA Community Housing Reserve Fund, $40,000 to the CPA Historic Resources Fund for a total of $190,000, or take any action thereon or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Hood. I move that the town vote to transfer the unexpended sum of $190,000 from the Community Preservation Act, sorry, Community Preservation Fund project for the old Central Fire Station project as originally appropriated by Article 27 of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting to the following CPA Reserve Funds as follows. $150,000 to CPA Community Housing Reserve Fund and $40,000 to CPA Historic Resources Fund as contained in Article 22 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Seconded. Thank you, Mr. Copeland, for the second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you get up. I was looking over there, please. Hi, uh, Pat Lynch, 33 Park Street. I was just wondering, and it's probably not a question I can ask on this um, article, but is there a plan for the fire station? Yes, that's not germane to the article, and I don't know the answer. Honestly, do, I don't know if anybody does in the room right now. So that money cannot go into renovating that to bring it back? I can. Yeah, I'm going to let Janet answer. That's a specific question I'm going to let Janet answer, because that's okay. germane. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right. Um, this money, okay, normally would have gone ahead and just be put back into those categories, but I wanted to make sure that this was transparent to the town, that the monies are being put back in. Should the new developer request it, just like the, older, you know, the old developer did, we would be able to entertain the application for the same, you know, the same items, you know, for being affordable housing as well as historic. So yes, it's available if they go ahead and apply. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Further questions? <coughs> Excuse me, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Article passes unanimously. <clears throat> Article 23, Community Preservation Fund Habitat for Humanity. To see if the town will vote to transfer from the Community Preservation Fund FY 2025 balance reserved from the community housing category the sum of $150,000 to support the construction of a Habitat for Humanity st duplex style home to be located at 12 Newton Street in Ayer or take any action there on or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Ms. Livingston. I move the town vote to transfer $150,000 from the Community Preservation Fund FY 2025 balance reserve from the community housing category to support the construction of a Habitat for Humanity duplex style home to be located at 12 Newton Street in air as contained in Article 23 and read by the moderator and further to authorize the select board to enter into a grant agreement with Habitat for Humanity on such terms and conditions as the board deems appropriate. Seconded. Thank you, Mr. Copeland, for the second. 
questions or discussion on Article 23? Can I show the slide? Go ahead, please. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to show the slide. I'd like everybody just to see the rendition of the um, duplex style house that they want to go ahead and build. Um, there, there it is over on Newton Street. And again, Habitat for Humanity is a win-win-win all the way around um, for the town, for Habitat, as well as for the two sets of families that are going to be able to, to live there. I wanted you to see what they were planning. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Th this is AI, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. Okay. <laughs> Any further questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of Article 23? Aye. 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 Opposed? Article 23 passes unanimously. And bless you, whomever. <laughs> Article 24. Ac I should say Gesundheit, excuse me. Acquisition by purchase of 71 Sandy Pond Road. To see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to acquire by gift, purchase, or eminent domain a parcel of land with any improvements thereon located at 71 Sandy Pond Road, Ayer, containing 2.29 acres, more or less, being tax ID map 29-0-1, being those premises described in a deed recorded with the Middlesex South District Registry of Deeds in book 81572, page 347, for open space and recreation purposes, mm -hmm. and to accept a deed for said property and, as funding for such acquisition and costs related thereto, transfer from the Community Preservation Fund FY 2025 balance reserve from the open space category the sum of $350,000 with additional funding of $350,000 to be provided as determined by the select board from UDAG, unrestricted grant funds, and ARPA funds for a total acquisition cost of $700,000 and further to authorize the select board to enter into all agreements and execute on behalf of the town any and all instruments as may be necessary or convenient to effectuate the purpose of this article or take any action thereon or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Copeland. I move that the town vote to authorize the select board to acquire by purchase a parcel of land with any improvements thereon located at 71 Sandy Pond Road, Air, containing 2.29 acres, more or less, being tax ID map 29-0-1, being those premises described in a deed recorded with the Middlesex South District Registry of Deeds in book 81572, page 347, for open space and recreation purposes, and to accept a deed for said property, and as funding for such acquisition and cost related thereto, to transfer from Community Preservation Fund fiscal year 2025, balance reserve for the open space category, the sum of $350,000. With additional funding of $350,000, as determined by the select board, for the total acquisition cost of $700,000. And further to authorize the select board to enter into all agreements and execute on behalf of the town any and all instruments as may be necessary or convenient to effectuate the purchase purpose of the article as contained in Article 24 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Thank you, Ms. Livingston, for the second. We have a presentation on this article. Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Brown. Uh, through yes, the DPW uh, director has a presentation. Thank you. To all, Dan Von Skelkwick, our director of DPW. Good evening. Uh, yeah, on behalf of everyone who's been working hard on this um, project, I, uh, I'll be giving the presentation. I'm trying to fix this mic here. Um, so Article 24, this is for the acquisition by purchase of 71 Sandy Pond Road. Um, you can see on the map here where the parcel is located. It's across the street from the Sandy Pond Beach uh, at the intersection of Snake Hill Road and Sandy Pond Road. So next slide, please. So here is the property as was uh, before the demolition recently occurred by the, the current owner. Um, just a, a look at the property. Most of you probably driven by. Uh, next slide. And here's what it looks like as of a few days ago after the uh, demolition has occurred to the buildings and that it has been uh, uh, flattened. Uh, next slide. So a little background on the property. Uh, the lot size is 2.29 acres. As mentioned, it's the, at the corner of Sandy Pond Road and Snake Hill Road, um, diagonally across from the town beach. 
The original asking price from the owner was $900,000. That included the house on site. The current purchase and sale, which was entered into by the select board, is $700,000. Um, and that includes the demo of the house by the owner. Um, it did appraise. We had an appraisal completed, and that was for the land only without the house, um, and that was $350,000. Historically, the property had a, a single residential house on it, and there was an environmental due diligence completed. The report is up on the website, and uh, no evidence of potential environmental concerns were, were found through that study. Next. Uh, here's an, an aerial of the existing site from uh, Google Maps showing it before the demo. And on to the next slide. And then as the uh, select board was working uh, through the purchase and sale, this was the potential development that was uh, to occur would potentially have been two uh, uh, duplexes on the site. Um, next. And so talking about some of the you know, reasons the town looked at this real closely, the select board. You know, AIR's master plan has goals in it. Um, usually I don't like to read right off the of slides, but in this case, I think it's, it's a little valuable for some of this. You know, Sandy Palm Beach, it's among AIR's most valuable open space and resources, straight from the master plan. Finding a long-term parking solution um, and maintaining a safe level of usership will be a long-term need for Sandy Palm Beach. The availability, availability location and safety of parking facilities uh, impacts the viability of residential commercial districts and is an issue most acutely felt in air in the downtown air area and also Sandy Palm Beach during the summer. Um, prioritizing the expansion of open space or public access easements around ponds and streams in air to facilitate public access and rec recreational use such as kayak launches and hiking trails. Um, so next slide please. Also, I won't read through this, but also in the open space recreation plan, uh, there's discussion in here about um, you know, available parking being an issue at the Sandy Palm Beach um, and the needs of that and um, also needs of the open space. So kind of in short, the, the general theme was um, parking and water access, which potentially this could help assist with this property that we're looking at in this article. Uh, next slide, please. Town support for the purchase of 71 Sandy Pond Road. So that the town has received um, following uh, support, the select board, the parks commission, community preservation committee, the town planner, the director of community and economic development, and also myself as the DPW director. Next slide. A little bit of project background. So in November 2023, um, private property owner approached the town regarding interest uh, of the uh, potential to purchase the property. The select board authorized um, the town manager to commence negotiations on the potential purchase and sales agreement. And the owner does continue to proceed with his plans to develop. Um, in December of 2023, the select board approves the purchase and sales agreement of 71 Sandy Pond Road for the 700,000 contingent upon um, the house being uh, demolished and removed by the owner, leveled to grade satisfactory environmental and, and uh, um, other factors, including town meeting approval. And this went through a process of executive session with the select board at several meetings. Um, project background continued. On February 7th, the town manager submitted to the CPC for a funding of 350,000 in CPA funds under the open space category. And the Community Preservation Committee voted unanimously to recommend the project application for a public hearing on March 6th. So then on March 6, 2024, CPC holds a public hearing on this application for 350,000 in CPA funds and voted unanimously to recommend the warrant article for town meeting. Uh, next. Um, so kind of a summary of the funding, that's $700,000 is the purchase price through the purchase and sale that was negotiated down from the 900,000. Appraisal of the land, we mentioned just the land, $350,000. Um, so the $700,000 would be broken up into two pots of $350,000, one to come from CPA funds from the open space, uh, subject to town meeting approval, this article, and $350,000 to come from the town's ARPA funds. Those are our federal funds that the town received as a result of COVID, and those are under the jurisdiction of the select board. 
So on the bottom, you'll see in bold, the use of these CPA funds and ARPA funds for this purchase, it results in no direct local tax impact to the air taxpayer. These are funds we already have. Uh, next. So some other considerations, uh, and this is a, a project of the DPWs. Um, we got a $500,000 complete street grant, thanks to the town engineer and his hard efforts. Uh, to, to develop the Snake Hill Road, Sandy Pond Road intersection out to Patriot Way as a complete street. And so what that's going to have, it's going to have bike lanes, it's going to have sidewalk, and also we've been able to make some formal on-street parking in the area. Uh, one excellent thing it does is adds crosswalks. It shortens the crossings by having curb extensions, or what you call bump outs in the area and also rectangular rapid flashing beacons. Those are, if you drive down East Main Street, you see the flashing signs, you can push the button at the crosswalk to get across. So that, those would be present crossing Sandy Pond Road at this intersection. Um, additionally, there'll be speed feedback signs. We already have some out there. Those are the signs that tell you how fast you're going and to slow down. But kind of more importantly, as the town does have this area um, identified as a, what's called a safety zone through MassDOT regulations, and the speed limit out there is 20 miles per hour. So we just have to, as part of this project, we will sign it for that. So it'll be a much, uh, you know, try to drive some better safety out there through this project. Um, and that's, you know, this project ties right into the property at 71 Sandy Pond, right, right, right across the street. We did recently bid the project expecting to construct this construction season. And we'll get more word out when that's going on. Uh, next slide, so other considerations, things that are going on in the area. Uh, Sydney Pond Beach House improvements. So the Beach House, there was a rehab study completed in uh, 2024, recently completed. And it, it, in that study, the Parks Department has it commissioned, and it, it talks about rehabbing the building or replacement. So decisions need to be made on that. So, you know, if 71 Sydney Pond Road were acquired, that could be a dynamic that factors in. Um, FY26 capital budget includes the improvement project, so that's you know, further out in the parks budget, that's next year. Um, complete streets project, we mentioned that, and 71 Sandy Pond Road, those would factor into the, the beach house decisions I was kind of just mentioning. Um, next slide, please. And so this, um, I would take this with a grain of salt. This is, you know, really it's, a, I, I've been calling it a blank canvas out there if the town acquires the property there's gonna be a public planning process to determine what exactly is, is done with that site. But, you know, but based on some of the needs and the master plan and, and things like that, we've you know, potentially added some parking space, some green space, you know, potentially put a pavilion, things like that. It's all ultimately up to the town what, what, would, be go, what would go in up there. Um, but this is just a concept of a potential, you know, um, potentially what could be done but that would be done through a future public process. And I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dan. Welcome. Do you have any questions for Dan? Other people, please approach the microphones to speak about this. Susan yes. Tordella, Five Hedgeway. So it's assessed at 350,000, but we're paying 700,000. Help me understand that. Yeah, so the assessment is for the land only. It, doesn't, it didn't include that original um, building that was on site and um, you know it, it's part of it is the the cost of doing the business through the private development so originally it was 900,000 talked down to 700,000 um, is you know my understanding if you want to add anything Robert Charlie have the details on that. Yeah. is somebody going to explain that so well, we're still paying can you help me Robert yeah, Mr. Moderator. Please, uh, Mr. Pontbriand. Could it, would it be possible to have the building commissioner who did some analysis on this speak, speak to that question about the price? I'd be happy to. Mr. Schultz, would you like to yes. join us? Thank you. Charlie. Let me get excuse me. For those who don't know, it's Charlie, Stiltz, who, Charlie Schultz, excuse me. Charlie, Charlie. come down Come on here. down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you work here. You know. I'm also a resident, too. I know. The, the reason we're paying or proposing 700000 instead of the three hundred and fifty value price is I equate it to if you go and look for a piece of land by the ocean, you're going to pay 
500 to a million. You get a lot in some area that's uh, out in the wilderness, you're going to pay $100,000. To me, I looked at this as a one, one, one chance in a lifetime deal to get this property. And I ran some numbers. If the developer had done the two duplexes, I don't know if you want me to go through all of them, but he stand to make about 125,000 per unit. He would have had four units, which was about 500,000. I believe he purchased it for about three, and he had another $80,000 with the eviction and the legal cost, the engineering, and removing the house. So, you know, he could have made more money, but there's no risk with this. And so it's just a once in a lifetime opportunity to get this piece of property for the town. Because once it's gone, it's gone. And I drive by there every day and there's women and little kids parking by the little pond at Cannon Gate. They're opening their doors into oncoming traffic. I mean, so. Okay, thank you for that explanation. But is a parking lot considered open space? I guess so, there's nothing above it. <laughs> well, that's just a concept. Well, I, I, excuse me, excuse me. Um, I think Mr. Von Skelkwick had turned his head away when he said, please take this with a grain of salt. This is one possible use okay. of the land, but it will be open for the townsfolk to decide how to use the land. Will it help get a kayak or a boat access? That's why I'm for across this. Across the street? Yes, hopefully. That's up to the park department. But it would open up some parking spots in order for people to pull in, I believe, with a truck and unload their kayaks. Because that's the a real feet. safety issue along um, Snake Hill, with people stopping to load their kayaks and back Well, no, and I, I would propose, if I had any say in it, that it go on the left-hand side towards the gun club, because there's already a gate there that can be fenced off. And if you have more parking on the other side of the road, you could take three or four spaces, and people with vehicles could move uh, to those parking spots there and just unload uh, their canoes and kayaks okay, from there. Thank you. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Uh, uh, Kevin Bresnahan, Wachusadev East. Um, so mainly just a comment um, because, like you said, Charlie, I, I recognize the need for additional parking there. You have people parking all over the road now during the summer. My one comment or ask of everybody is as you look at this, because I, I know that was just a rendering, but I counted about 30 spaces in the a possible. Think about the capacity that a beach can hold for safety, right? The safety of the swimmers and the lifeguards that have to maintain the safety of that beach. We all know recently that we had a tragic accident just last year and it is a very small beach. So I really just hope as you look at the use of this property and how much parking you put there, I really hope we're able to put a maximum capacity at this beach or return it to just air residents or that is really very strongly looked at for the safety of everybody work, you know, working at that beach and just the residents that are trying to enjoy it. And then I really hope you look at the, the boat access as well. It, it's great for residents to have kayaks and canoes and access to that pond. It is also 69 acres, so you really need to look at if you're letting outboards and large boats in there, again, for all of the swimmers and everybody else on there, it, it will really become a safety issue. So I hope you're looking at what type of access you're gonna allow into a very small pond. Like, and, and that would all be determined during the public process. Excuse yeah. me, Charlie, can you use the mic? Yes, that'll all be determined during the public process yeah. of what the town wants to use it for if they want access yeah. in this. Get, totally get it. Just probably someone and many people in this room will be on that, so I just wanted to get the comment out there. Thank Thanks, you. Kev. Uh, hi, Dan Gleason, 24 Howard Street. First, Scott, I want to say thank you for all your service on the Finn Commons Site Board over the years. Appreciate it very much. I'm not sure who the right person to answer this question is, and I got a few here on my phone notes. Uh, do we know the current tax revenue we're collecting on that property? Mr. Moderator, Mr. Uh, through you, um, Ms. Tierney, the finance manager, can speak to that. Thank you. <clears throat> Ms. Tierney? Through you, Mr. Moderator, Please. the fiscal 24 taxes on that property is $5,664. All right, thank you. You're welcome. If the, before you go away, 
It's probably an unfair question, but it, I recall a selectman's meeting where the plan was if we say no to this tonight, the developer plans to build some single family homes on it. Mm -hmm. Is there an exponential increase that could be estimated if there were three single families on that worth half a million each? I mean, I don't have that information in front of me, but it would definitely be more. They'd be on the tax revenue, on right. the tax roll. It could only be two single families. So, okay. Great. He just said that it could only be two single families, just for informational okay. purposes. Well, regardless, there's still a, a, a loss of tax revenue just as in its current state. There's a loss of tax revenue if the developer would just develop it with, with further real estate. Um, also, the plan, whatever it might be, and it's interesting, at the selectmen's meeting, I think Robert put up three concepts. All three had parking. So I think we see where this is going. It's going to be some sort of parking, or people will be pushing for that in the plan. So now we've got a project that has no budget yet. We don't know what it is going to be, so we don't know how much more costs. So it's 700 plus some amount for the project, plus the opportunity cost of the tax revenue that's lost. So there's more than, more than $700,000. Also, there's an opportunity cost to the UDAG and the CPA funds that are going to be put to use in this which could be put to use in other, in other places. For example, Lower Peroni Park is a mess. It has been for years. The basketball courts need to be redone. There could be lights put there. It's big about kayak launches. There's a little boat launch at the end. There could be a better parking situation. There could be a boat launch there. It takes Mr. Bresenhan's concerns away from what would be happening on that pond. Also, we're talking about something that's probably going to be in use for about two months of the year. There's only a parking problem there during like July and August. So you're going to pay $700,000 plus all these other costs that we're losing and opportunities for those funds to support something for two months of the year. I do appreciate the Complete Streets grant. I, the only thing that gave me pause to even consider being in favor of this was the fact that that was being done, because there is a safety additional component that would be done there. But still, to cross the street, and as a, the, the, the woman who spoke first, like, are people really going to take their kayak on their back across the street to go launch it over in Sandy Pond? The parking's across the street, right? So that doesn't make a lot of sense to me either. Bear with me, I think it was just a couple of other things I wanted to look at, make sure I didn't miss. Uh, I second Mr. Bresahan's concerns. The beach is small. Do we really want to put a situation in place where more people can get on that beach and put more pressure on the teenage lifeguards based upon a recent tragedy and one not too many years before that? Uh, so I think that's a real uh, danger to safety. Um, personally, I don't trust the town's judgment on real estate too much. When you look at the fire station, they let it go for 50K. Mr. Moore turned around and resold that and flipped it for about 300 and 350, roughly, I think the price was, about a six to seven X price, and nothing happened on the property still with the new developer in there. So obviously the town could have recaptured more money if they had done that here. So the judgment of spending 700K for this project, plus the things I've pointed out as far as other opportunity costs, that money could be going to other projects and other uses. Um, I'd rather see it, some of it go towards other uh, residential stuff like Ms. Provodaka showed with the uh, the project for the, the house on Newton Street. But anyway, I think I've said enough. You get my point. I'm, I'm really a hard no against this, and I hope we don't, we don't vote for it. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Um, so Ms. I Livingston. just want to remind everybody, the other thing that was talked about at the select board meeting as far as, and I don't think it really got mentioned tonight, as far as the beach itself. So that little parking area right in front of the beach, we could bump that fence out. Okay, so extending the size of the beach itself so that people could seat at the beach. Um, so, and also, we're, we're not using UDAG, so you wouldn't be replenishing the money. We're using ARPA. So you, this $700,000, as far as the $350,000 from the ARPA, you're never having to repay back. Um, that was given to the town during COVID, and it, we've been using it periodically for infrastructure um, all meeting the federal guidelines and everything. So you don't have to worry about putting that back. Um, as far as parking, there, I agree that there does seem to be, the drawings does seem to focus on parking. And again, that would be a public process. This is a one-time event. If we say no, this may never come up again. Um, and just for the fire station, that was for sale for like 10, 15 years, and no one ever wanted it, and that's why it was finally just taken. And then the original owner, I think, um, something happened to him, and then he passed it on. So that's what happened on that. So thank you. Well said. Thank you. Charlie, would you like to be recognized? Yes, if I could, Mr. Moderator. Just for the financial portion, uh, taking off the tax rate, if the developer builds two single-family single houses, and just say you have two child per house, that's four children. The last I checked, it's 21,000 plus to educate a child in a year. 
and <laughs> at, at, our, at our tax rate, the tax rate on $800,000 house is only going to be about 9600 so it's a negative. All right, so you just misinformed this whole audience grossly, all right? Because when, no, when the project, yes, we don't. No, I didn't. I was on the school committee for 11 years. I know how the school yeah. budget is, is constructed. I'm telling you what I that took That 21000 per student does not come out of the town of Ayr. A small portion of it does. Part it's comes from town of Shirley. Is, is, a portion, am I going to get to speak, Mr. Schultz? No, Mr. Gleason, please. He's interrupting me, Mr. Tillotson. I have the floor here, correct? No. No. I do. Mr. Gleason, please. You have a point to make. Ms. Your point is that Charlie's math is not correct, correct? That's true. And I wrote up a pretty detailed thing for the uh, West Great Street project when he said all the students who were going to come into that project would cost the town of air. And mm -hmm. it's wildly inaccurate. Because he, he, make, he, can, he, can, he can calculates it as if it's done by the town, everything is done by the town of air. It's not the air school district anymore. It's air school, air Shirley Regional School District. There's state funding from Chapter 70. Excuse There's me. air tax I, money. I, I, There's I'm Shirley sorry. tax money. There's various Mr. grants. Mr. Well, it's an We're incorrect discussing. statement, and I'm giving you the details why. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you complete? No. So I came back up to mention the beach house was mentioned in there. I think that would be a great project for some of the money that was intended for this. So the, uh, the CPA money that's going towards this project could be used to help rehab the beach house, and that would be a, a use of that money that wouldn't cause other taxation or whatever other funding might get used to help to construct that. And I, there wasn't a, an answer to the question. I think it's probably from Mrs. Provodakis, but the first woman is open space park, is parking open space, because that's what the article says, right? It says open space. Yeah, open space, recreation. Recreation, yes. Right? Would a Thank parking you. lot qualify under her funds? I think she's the only person qualified to really answer that question. Thank you, and I do appreciate that parking is part of the discussion, but that is a plan to be done in the future. Okay, through public process, thank you. Faith Salter, 10 Winthrop. I just wanna appreciate the effort that went into this as one of those moms who's opened the door into traffic on multiple occasions because Sandy Pond is a gift and a treasure in our town. We can go there with our kids after work and I love it, I love this project, I love the idea of being able to safely park there and not wonder if I'm gonna be able to find a place to park. I think there's a lot of creative ideas that can go into hopefully getting kayaks on that pond, which I really, really wanna do. So thank you, I think this is a really neat idea. Excuse me. So my name is Marian Stoddard, I'm at 204 Autumn Ridge Drive. I want to congratulate the, the selectmen and uh, members of the other uh, boards in town for uh, conceiving this project. I think it's a wonderful project. I think that the town of Air lacks, presently lacks land, uh, land for, con for conservation and recreation. I think this is a rare opportunity for the town to acquire more lands for conservation and recreation. And I strongly support the article. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Provodakis. I don't know if you want me up that way again. To answer Mr. Gleason, um, you know, with regards to, and, and the woman at the beginning, about open space money being used from CPA funds for open space and with it being a parking lot. I, when the, con, um, the Community Preservation Committee was looking at this, we know that they are looking at it also, again, it's the public forum that's going to take effect of what it's going to be there um, but we do want it to be open space we want trees we want possibly you know picnic tables and things like that so this can be used year-round I CPA funds can't be used just for a parking lot uh, that's that's definitely true that's why we want it to be like a pocket park to go along with it so that will be our input during that public forum of making sure that it's something that people can use within that area um, above and beyond so I wanted to make sure that you all knew that Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, on this side, please. Uh, my name is Chiro Njinia, 40 Norwood Ave. Uh, thank you for this great uh, initiative. It's a great project. My only question is in terms of uh, cost. Uh, after purchasing this for $700,000, how much money do we need to, to develop this property to get to this parking space? And uh, also, I want to find out this parking space that we are about to develop. Uh, is it going to be generating revenue for the city or is it just going to be a free parking? Thank you. Thank you. If I get that correctly, what will be the cost of building it and what revenue will be generated by it? 
Yes, uh, the cost of Thank culture. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Mr. Moderator, Mr. please. Mr. Moderator, through you to the gentleman's question. Um, for, t for tonight, Article 24 is the first step, which is for town meeting to decide, and that is whether or not to purchase the property for $700,000. If the town purchases the property for $700,000, it'll be under the town, and there will be a lot of work to be done to further develop it. And I believe the DPW director said it best, think of it as a blank slate, though there's been some talk about parking and so forth. There are many possibilities that will have to go through a public process, including the funding, and not to speak um, to anyone specific, but I know that at the public hearing, the CPC is looking to the future for potentially some future funds towards that, not all the funds, grant opportunities and so forth. So we, the first step would be the acquire the property. The second step would be the public process as to what the community wants and what that would cost. So we don't have those um, specifics at this time. Excuse me. Uh, uh, the reason why I ask this question is because uh, it's a one thing to acquire this, this property and it's great, but sometimes when we have a vision up front, we can then be able to make better decision in terms of should we even acquire? Because once acquired, then there's no turning back. The next question is what do we do because we've already invested money and we just, we are kind of forced to, to construct because we don't have any alternative. On this side, please. Jacob Solon, 75 Sandy Pond Road. I'm sorry, could you say the address? 75 Sandy Pond Road. Thank you. Next door. Um, I just wanted to point out that a lot of the Sandy Pond improvement project that's going to be happening will also be adding parking to the road and will be slowing down the area, um, which will make it more accessible. Um, I think this is a great idea, but I'm not sure that it's the best solution for that area. Um, I think having more housing in town might be a, a, a better asset at this point. Thank you. Sir? Hi. Scott Peterson, 30 Holly Ridge. I'm, I'm curious uh, if we purchase the land now, it's still purchased land, and we could, if we couldn't agree at some point further what to do with it to sell it, what do we think we could get for it? Would we only get the 350 at that point if we, if we turned around and said, oh, never mind? This Mr. Moderator, you through you three. and to the gentleman's question and not to get way off of Article 24, but if the town was to purchase the property, the town would own the property. The town theoretically could sell the property, but it would have to come back to town meeting. So theoretically, yes, I don't believe there's any plan to do that, but to answer your question that the town owns property, the town could sell property through a process which the key piece includes town meeting approval. Okay. Thank you. To my right, Jess. Oh, Jess Gugino, 8 Mountain View Avenue. Um, I just want to stress, I'm, I'm firmly in favor of this project. Uh, it is in close proximity to an existing priceless resource in air being the beach. If this is sold, or if this is sold and developed by the, the current owner, that, that opportunity goes away forever. Uh, there's a lot that can be done here. Um, the town process uh, depends on people actually coming and participating. So for those who say they don't trust the town, actually show up and, and join, the, join the discussion. Um, so I'm strongly in favor of this because as I understand it, if this does not pass tonight, the development will proceed. So it's a, it's a one-time opportunity for something in close proximity that I think could really benefit the town. Thank you. I'm gonna ask you to come to the microphone to move the question, but we had somebody walking to the mic. May I, Mr. Moderator? Yes, please. Thank you, Pauline Conley, Cambridge Street. I'll be very brief. As one of the original members of the Community Preservation Committee in 2001, this is only the second opportunity the town has had to purchase open space. We did purchase one other property down by where Mr. Moderator lives on Oak Ridge Drive. This is only the second opportunity and I would encourage all of us to take this opportunity. There will be close, Janet, $3 million remaining in community preservation funds we certainly can afford to purchase this property, develop it 
into an open space park recreation where we can use the CPA funds for that purpose. Thank you. Thank you. Alan Peterson, Mulberry Circle, I move to call the question. We have a motion to call the question. We need a simple majority. Two thirds. Okay. I need a two thirds majority. All in favor of calling the question? Stopping debate at this point? Please say aye. Aye. Opposed? I think we got there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Back to the original article, please. Voting to approve. Article 24. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It carries with two thirds. Thank you very much. <laughs> Article 25, zoning bylaw amendment, update mm -hmm. of the town's zoning map. To see if the town will vote to approve the revised town of Ayer zoning map available on the town website at www.air.ma.us slash town meeting and on file in the town clerk's office showing the rezoning of 27 and 29 Harvard Road from general residence to general business or take any action thereon or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Hood. I move that the town vote to approve the revised Town of Air zoning map showing the rezoning of 27 and 29 Harvard Road from general resident to general business as contained in Article 25 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Thank you very much. Moved and seconded. Um, we have a brief presentation. Danny Ruiz, our town planner. Can we go to the next slide? Um, these are the summary of the four zoning amendments that will be coming uh, up next, but we can go to the next slide. Uh, these are just the dates of all the meetings that uh, these proposed zoning amendments were uh, discussed at public meetings. Uh, there are various meetings that were held, uh, planning board, conservation, select board, zoning board. Um, so there's been a variety of meetings you can go to the next one. Here's the proposed zoning map. Uh, we can go to the next slide just to zoom in. All right, so at the October 25th, 2021 town meeting and the uh, April 25th, 2022 town meeting, the 29 and 27 Harvard Road uh, parcels were rezoned from general residence to general business by citizens' petitions. Uh, as part of those citizens' petitions, uh, petitions, the zoning map was not included. So to uh, codify the actual zoning map and the rezoning of those, uh, the actual zoning map is being uh, presented to town meeting for adoption. Thank you. Any further questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion, excuse me, Article 25 carries. Thank you. Article 20. 26. I'm sorry, passes by two thirds majority. Thank you very much. Article 26, zoning bylaw amendment, amendment to section 320 3 2 A of the Air Zoning Bylaw, size of the Zoning Board of Appeals, ZBA, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 21, to see if the town will vote to amend the Air Bylaws, Chapter 320, zoning. Article 3, administration enforcement, Section 320 3 2. Board of Appeals, A, establishment by inserting therein the underlying bold text as follows. It'll read completely. There is hereby established a Board of Appeals. Memberships, appointments, and terms of regular and associate members shall be made in accordance with Chapter 40A of the Massachusetts General Laws. The Board of Appeals, consisting of five members and two alternate members who shall be residents of Town of Air, shall be appointed as provided by MGL Chapter 40A, Section 12, or take any other action thereon or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to amend the air bylaws, chapter 320, zoning article three, administration and enforcement, section 320-3.2, board of appeals, A, establishment of, by inserting the underlined bold text as contained in article 26 and read by the moderator. Second. second. Thank you for the second, Mr. Hood. Mr. Ruiz. Yes. All right. All right, so uh, for this uh, zoning uh, amendment, the, this is merely a clarification portion of, uh, to clean up the zoning board. 
uh, section in 320, uh, 3.2 establishment. It's to clearly uh, explain how many members there are on the zoning uh, board. Uh, as we have it today, uh, there are five members with two alternate members. So that section is just being added in within this bylaw, uh, within the wording to clarify that. Uh, state law uh, specifies it can be either three or five, and our board is a five uh, board member. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes by two thirds. I'm sorry. Passes. Excuse me. <laughs> The planning board, <coughs> would the planning board please report on this article? I already got the motion. We'll do it in the next one. I'm sorry. It passes by two thirds majority. Article 27. Zoning bylaw amendment. Amendment to section 320 5 2 table of use regulations, zoning restrictions. To see if the town will vote to amend the AR bylaws, chapter 320, zoning, article 5. Use regulations, section 320-5.2, table of use regulations, A, attachment one, by deleting the strike through text and inserting the underlined bold text as follows. I'm gonna have a hard time describing this. It says shown in the warrant. It's shown in the warrant. Or take any other action there on in relation to thereto as shown in the warrant. Thank you. Mr. Moderator. Yes. I move that the town vote to amend the air bylaws, chapter 320, zoning article 5, use regulations, section 320-5.2, table of use regulations, A, attachment 1, by deleting the strike through text and inserting the underlined bold text as contained in article 27 and read by the moderator. Second. Thank you for the second, Mr. Copeland. Mr. Ruiz. Yes. All right. So, um, this is the table of use regulations which uh, governs the way uh, uses are allowed within our town's zoning districts. Uh, uh, you'll see class of, u of use on the left-hand side and then on zoning districts on the top. Uh, just a breakdown what, the, what each of these letters will represent. P means permitted, by, um, permitted use. SPZ is special permit by the zoning board. Uh, SPB is a special permit by the planning board. SPS is a special permit by the select board, and no, and N is not permitted. Uh, so the sections that are highlighted in red, um, under the A1 uh, and A2, 1.2 for two family dwellings, that has been changed over to, actually why don't we switch to the next slide, that way it's easier to compare. Um, you can see the comparison here, so that you can see what the existing versus, um, pro can everyone see that? <laughs> okay. Um, so on the left-hand side, you'll see that the uh, two-family dwellings under the A1 and A2 zones go from a uh, special permit by the zoning board to permitted by right. The uh, two-townhouse uh, two and multifamily dwellings under the A1 and A2 go from not permitted to special permit by the planning board. Um, the townhouses and multifamily dwellings under the general business zoning will go from S, uh, the special permit by the zoning board to special permit by the planning board. The, on, on the left hand side, you'll see uh, the strike through through apartments. It's going to be changed over to dwelling units uh, as we do not have a definition for apartments or in the definitions we use dwelling. Um, and then as you'll see underneath on 1.7, we added uh, the S's to units to make it plural. And there's a strike through uh, on the, gr the ground floor of the building, which is changed over to the elevation of the building at street level for clarification purposes. And then on the downtown air form base code, it's gonna go from the special permit by planning board to permitted by right. You wanna go to the next page? Um, so the town wants to encourage more affordable housing so that uh, residents, residences that want to downsize can sell their houses and afford to stay in town. Uh, two family dwellings are already allowed by right um, within the general residence, the downtown form-based code um, in the um, 
uh, West Air Village and the Downtown Park Street form base code. It's also uh, allowed in the mixed use transitional and general business. So adding the A1 and the A2 uh, will just allow more uh, two families uh, to be permitted by right within the town. Uh, allowing to townhouse and multifamily dwellings in the A1 and A2 and in the general business zones by special permit from the planning board will make some of these properties with these zones viable for uh, multifamily construction. Projects that would propose more than four units would uh, trigger the inclusionary housing bylaw, which would then require them to have uh, affordable units at a 80% AMI. Uh, we've also, so the other changes were uh, the dwelling units, which we already went through, and then the 1.7, which was the change from the special permit to the to buy right. Thank you, Mr. Ruiz. Any questions? I'm going to ask the chair of the planning board to step forward and give the planning board's um, report. I see you there. <laughs> Through the moderator town meeting, uh, I'm Jonathan Kranz, the chair of the planning board. I live at 42 Washington Street, which many of you may know as the former Anderson Funeral Home. Uh, the planning board enthusiastically endorses these changes. Uh, we have heard over and over and over again from citizens who are concerned that current development practices will lead to a town that is too expensive for most of us to live in, or our children, or our grandchildren. So the ultimate purpose of these changes is just to allow more flexibility in housing so that we're not just confined to the development of single family homes, but also other tiers of housing that may be less expensive, including townhouses and multifamily houses. But the ultimate goal consistent with our master plan is to diversify the range of housing in the hopes of giving greater opportunities for people to own or rent and stay in there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kranz. Ms. Gugino. Uh, Jess Gugino, 8 Mountain View Avenue, also a member of the zoning board. I just want to make sure people understand that the changes uh, on line 1.2 for two family dwellings, where it currently is a special permit through the zoning board to put in a duplex in the A1 and A2 section, that would change it to permitted by right. And that would just be eliminating the need for a public hearing process before the zoning board. Um, that would be something that uh, abutting residents um, would, would potentially lose. Thank you. Further questions or discussion on this article? Seeing or hearing none, these are two thirds. All in favor of Article 27? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Article 27 passes by two thirds. Article 28. I feel like I want to do a stretch in zoning. Zoning bylaw amendment, amendment to section 320-10-3-3 for inclusionary housing. To see if the town will vote to amend the AR bylaws, chapter 320, zoning, article 10, special regulation, sections 320-10-3-3, basic requirements by inserting the underlined bold text as follows. Section H, for design guidelines of preferred affordable multifamily new construction, refer to the Massachusetts multifamily new construction design requirements and guidelines developed by BHDC, DND, Mass Housing, and MHP, and as may be amended from time to time. One, the Planning Board shall have the authority to allow new construction of multifamily housing under Section 320-10-3.3 of the Air Zoning Bylaws to allow for the construction of new units to meet the target unit sizes referenced in Section 4.B, Design Guidelines for Units, for units Layouts and Interior Dimensions dated April 2022, or take any other action thereon or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Yes, sir. I move that the town vote to amend Air Bylaw Chapter 320, Zoning Article 10, Special Regulations, Sections 320-10.3.3, Basic Requirements by inserting the underlying bold text as contained in Article 28 and read by the moderator. Second it. Thank you for the second, Mr. Copeland. Mr. Ruiz. Can you go to the next slide? 
All right. Uh, so for this zoning amendment the, is to uh, really address the uh, 750 square foot uh, minimum requirement that we have within our bylaw. Uh, this 750 square feet would still remain for projects that don't trigger the inclusionary housing. So for this to be uh, to be triggered, you'd have to have more than five more than five units, five or more. Uh, for this to uh, be triggered. And so what this would allow is for studios to basically be smaller than the 750 square feet that we require for a minimum um, square footage of a unit. Uh, and the reason we're doing this is uh, DHCD, who has now changed their name to EOHCL, uh, the state, uh, has proposed uh, new guidelines on square footages for affordable housing. And uh, within those uh, guidelines, uh, studios are around 600 square feet. And then uh, uh, a one bedroom is around 700 square feet and it goes up as you go up with the bedrooms. And this would just give the planning board the ability to uh, uh, waive the, seven, uh, the 750 square foot um, requirement when it comes to uh, the inclusionary housing bylaw. Thank you, Mr. Ruiz. Any questions or discussion? Sam Goodwin, 23 William Street. Uh, this, I don't think this is such a good idea. We're, we're just opening up housing for smaller rooms, smaller apartments for inclusionary housing. Isn't that um, like for affordable where you find families, not single individuals or, or um, one couple? I would think that you would pay a little more attention to the included housing, the affordable, so to speak, if you have a, a group rather than a single person. So I don't think this is, this is a good idea. Um, so as you know, there is kind of, there is a shortage right now with affordable uh, uh, housing for uh, single family, uh, for people who have just come out of college, uh, who are just going into the workforce, and they're trying to promote uh, affordable housing for all different types of people. Um, and this just allows for more flexibility for people who are looking for a studio, a one bedroom, a two bedroom, a three bedroom, because those criteria are all within this design guideline as well. Um, and it's to make it so that the rents are more affordable uh, because rents are based off of the square footage. So the smaller the unit, the more affordable it is for uh, people to be able to rent these. But this is a broad, is a broad brush, but it only um, encompasses affordable housing units, correct? This, this, it's not for fair market value apartments, it's for the it's, affordable only. It's for the, anything that is triggered by the inclusionary housing bylaw. So our inclusionary, inclusionary housing bylaw does not only, um, it's not only affordable. So there's a percentage that are considered 80% AMI and the other percent are market rate, but those are also going to be uh, built at that same square so footage. So the 80% will, will follow the same guidelines? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you. On this side, please. Eric Sackman, 7 Church Street. Um, has this, has the size, the 700 square foot uh, minimum requirement, has this been a problem in the past or is this simply an outgrowth of the proposed West Main Street apartment building that has been fraught with numerous issues and is potentially a way to make that project approved a little bit easier. So this did come up during the West Main Street project, uh, but this is not the only reason why we're doing this. Uh, these were uh, to allow, so in the design and requirements of, and guidelines, Within that document, they have tr specific square footages of what affordable uh, multifamily construction should be within the state. And this is, we're trying to meet those guidelines 
the 750 would still remain within our bylaw for anything that's not that doesn't trigger the inclusionary housing bylaw. So anything that's uh, proposed that's less than five units. So if you have four units, three units, all those would still have to rem uh, meet our 750 foot square foot um, minimum requirement. Anything that's proposed for that triggers the inclusionary housing bylaw, which is something we're trying to uh, push for more so that we have more affordable housing within the town of Air. Um, this gives the planning board that leeway to be able to allow that. Thank you. Susan, Susan Tordella, Five Hedgeway. So is this only for new construction or could you take a larger house and divide it into two units? This is only for new construction. Okay. Excuse me. I'm going to just... Through the it's moderator. Oh, I'm sorry. Through the moderator. To you, Mr. Weiss. These are only for projects of five or more units in the project. I think you asked two units, Susan, so it's... Or if you just that. took an existing house and subdivided it. Into five or more units. So I could take an existing house and divide it into two. That, then no, it would no, that's less than this. five units, five okay. dwelling units. I just want to be clear, this okay. only kicks in, my understanding, it only kicks in when the project is okay. for six units or more. Okay, so you couldn't build a house of 750 square feet. Yeah. Uh, Danny, you, I'm going to uh, go back to, I just wanted to clarify a okay, point. Okay, I hear you. I'll hear let you. Danny Char answer that. I'll let Charlie speak on that one. The, I appreciate your yeah. patience, people. This can get a little gummed up. Mr. Moderator, if I could. Mr. Schultz. Um, our zoning allows for a single family residence to be built under 750 square feet, but you have to have meet all zoning criteria for that, whatever zone you're in, for frontage, square footage, and stuff like that. Okay. But single family houses have never been included in the 750. They've always been allowed to be built under 750. Okay. I'd like to speak in favor of this because homelessness is a real problem. There are people in air who live in tents. They lived outside this winter and we need places for people to live and you don't need 750. My husband and I built a tiny house on wheels and it was about 200 square, 180 square feet. It was small, but 300, one person can live in 300 square feet easily. I'm Dennis Kern, 51 Pleasant Street. Uh, a quick, so this, if it is in fact triggered, how small can they go? That is, if it's not triggered, you have to stay at 750. If it is triggered, what would the allowable size of a studio, studio or one bedroom? A studio would be a would it be around 600 square feet. And then uh, uh, a one bedroom is uh, 700 square feet and then uh, 900 square feet for a two bedroom and then 1100 for a three bedroom. And, and they're all set forth and actually in the design guidelines. And then the developer could not then say, well, I can't quite make it at 600. Can you let me do it at 550? Or they might be able to do that or? Um, so the, the, the 600 square feet is not a requirement, it's a guideline, so it's, we, we, we would prefer that it be right around 600 square feet because that's where rents have been shown based on what the state has done for studies um, would be the best you know, size, but yes, it could be a little bit below that 650. I mean, that's 600. Right, and I, I guess my point is it, the developer is going to make the choice about how large rooms ought to be in order to maximize their potential gain from whatever it is that they build, even if the town feels like 600, let's say, is the right number. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Further questions or discussion? How does the planning board report? Hi, Jonathan Kranz again. Uh, the planning board found this as confusing as you do. And uh, if you'll notice, there was a, a slide with a lot of meeting dates. 
And so I, I just want you to know that we spend a lot of time deliberating over this, partly just to make sure we understood it ourselves. But um, we're, we're in favor of this. Uh, I think that uh, we want to encourage more inclusionary housing, and, uh, and in order to do that, we have to make sure that the guidelines are economically feasible in order to actually see construction done. So for the practical answer of actually getting the housing we need, this is the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kranz. Seeing, okay. This is a two-thirds vote. All in favor of Article 28? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. I'm going to say that the two-thirds majority carried that one. Thank you. Article 29. West Main Street, Bridge Easements to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to acquire by gift, purchase, or eminent domain permanent and or temporary easements on properties on or near West Main Street in the locations as approximately shown on a sketch plan, said plan available on the town's website at www.ar.ma.us slash town meeting and on file with the town clerk's office for the purpose of undertaking the West Main Street Bridge Project and further to authorize the select board to enter into any and all agreements and exec execute on behalf of the town any and all instruments is may, may be necessary or convenient to effectuate the purpose of the, this article or take any action thereon or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Ms. Livingston. I move that the town vote to authorize the select board to acquire by gift and or purchase permanent and or temporary easements on properties on or near West Main Street in the locations as shown on the plan contained in Article 29 and on file with the town clerk's office for the purpose of undertaking the West Main Street Bridge Project and to further authorize the select board to enter into any and all agreements and execute on behalf of the town any and all instruments as may be necessary or convenient to effectuate the purpose of Article 29 as contained in Article 29 and read by the moderator. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Copeland. <laughs> I believe we have a presentation, Dan. If you would like, with the is it quick? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> He's still here. Might as well make him work, right? I don't mind giving it. It's pretty. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, you know, simple. Um, so yeah, Article Twenty Nine, the West Main Street Bridge Project. So the existing bridge out there is actually partially located on two private properties, and there's no record of an easement. Uh, that's pretty common. We find. <laughs> with some of our infrastructure. Um, but anyways, the proposed bridge will also be partially on these same properties. So this is just kind of to clean up and put together a formal easement um, that's required to be able to maintain that, that portion of the bridge. And it's off, the article authorizes the select board to acquire the easement easements. Um, there is a plan on the next slide of the kind of approximate location on the south side of the uh, bridge. So, and that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Questions or discussion on this article? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Article passes unanimously. Article 30. Extension of sewer line in Willow Road for benefit of 254-260 Air Road in Littleton. To see if the town will vote to authorize property located at 254-260 Air Road, Littleton, to extend a sewer service line across Air Road to a sewer line located at 0 Littleton Road, Air, Map 30, Lot 16, said authorization required by Air General Bylaws, subsection 295-1, for the purpose of providing sewer for a private commercial site in Littleton or take any action thereon or in relation, relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Copeland. I move that the town vote to authorize property located at 254 to 260 Air Road, Littleton, Mass, to extend a sewer service line across Air Road to a sewer line located at Zero Littleton Road, Air, Map 30, Lot 16. Said authorization required by Air General Bylaw 295-1 for the purpose of providing sewer for a private commercial site in Littleton as contained in Article 30 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Thank you for the second. Mr. Van Skelquick, please. I believe you've got a quick overview, yep. Yeah, brief presentation for Article 30. Uh, so information as town meeting considers this. Um, so where is this located, the extension of the proposed sewer on Willow Road at 254 to 260 um, Air Road in Littleton? It's tough to see the map here, but we're off near the, um, the 
uh, intersection of Willow Road and Route 2A. That's where MassDOT is currently doing the project, the intersection project, if you're familiar, by the yellow star here. Uh, next slide. So what is being proposed? Um, the private developers are uh, proposing to extend the town sewer main on Willow Road to service the 184 to 192 Littleton Road property, that's in air, but also the 254 to 260 Air Road property in Littleton, which is the gas station, which is currently under a, um, a re, a revamp, rehabilitation to be improved. Um, the current sewer extent of air's uh, sewer infrastructure is on Willow Road. It's in the vicinity of Longview Circle. So that's north um, of the area. And we can see it on the next slide, I believe. Okay, good. I think you can actually see this decently. Um, so the, just in summary, the green um, piping and S, that's the manhole, that's the existing sewer that the town of Air has. So that's up near the Longview Circle intersection along Willow Road on the upper part of the, the screen. I guess that is the north side of uh, the, the map. The red um, dashed line is, this is all conceptual too, is a conceptual extension of the sewer main. Um, it'd be a low pressure sewer main. And then the purple dashed line are proposed sewer services from these properties. The 184 to 192 um, is the line in air off to the left and then kind of crossing the street to the south, that would be a connection to the, the uh, gas station property. That's the out of town sewer we're talking about. So um, what this project, a benefit the town would get from this is you can see the orange dashed lines, they don't look too dashed here, but those are potential service lines for those properties along Willow Road in air that are currently not at, um, on sewer. Um, next slide. So talking about sewer availability, um, just in brief and to kind of keep it simple, in, in 2022, uh, the town um, renewed its agreement with Devons for the wastewater treatment plant through renegotiations. And we have 350,000 gallons per day of capacity there. And that's to cover us as we move in the future. These, the 350,000 gallons per day, this number was developed based on town's future projections, known development, population growth, and also a factor for the unknown. Currently, we discharge, we have to discharge a minimum of 50,000 gallons per day to Devons, and this is to flush the force main we have heading to the uh, Devons facility. And we discharge minimum of that much, sometimes more, depending on infiltration inflow conditions, and that's when you're getting, you know, rainwater or groundwater in the sewer system. Um, next slide. So continued here in sewer availability. So approximately 250,000 gallons per day of that 350,000 in the current agreement, they were reserved for known developments. So there's 100,000 gallons per day that is population growth and factor for unknowns, which this request would come from. The gas station request, the out of town sewer is 1,220 gallons per day. And just kind of for context, that's about three houses, um, what we see on an average, um, so just for context, three residential houses. Uh, next slide. Some other considerations, um, the sewer extension, this would be paid and installed by the developer, and as mentioned, would provide a, a sewer main on Willow Road, allowing for the, connect, the properties in air that are currently on septic to connect to the sewer. Um, I, I am aware there is, I've had calls from residents out there of poor percolation tests um, and requests to connect to sewer in air. So this um, does seem it will be beneficial uh, in that respect. And also, um, Bennett's Brook does have an impairment for E. coli, so removing septic from the air is beneficial for the brook. Um, the out-of-town connection does pay the highest sewer rate as well for cons as you consider this. Uh, next slide. Oh, that's all I had. <laughs> <laughs> we can have them repeated if you'd like. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Director Von Skalkwick. Any questions or cons um, No, I've got it. Uh, Jason Salter of uh, Winthrop Ave. When you say that they pay the premium rate, do we cover all of our costs and maybe make a little at the premium rate, or are we still losing money? Can you repeat that, if they pay the premium rate? Are we covering all the costs, or are we still losing a little money, or are we making a little money? Are they uh, 
It, it, um, well, we, we, they're going to be paying to install it. We're not, the town doesn't pay to install at all. Yeah. So we would, we would, um, it's not the installation, the, the, it's the, the rate. The rate. The, yeah, they would pay the highest rate. So we have three tiers. Uh, but at the uh, highest excuse rate, me, I I'm going to try. Yeah. Does the highest tier rate cover the total cost of them using the system once it's implemented? I think that's what you were asking. It is, Mr. Yeah. Thompson. Um, I, I, yeah, I think the answer would be yes there. If it would cover them using the system. Yeah, Thank you. that's for the connection. Yeah. <laughs> uh, translating back, the answer is yes. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. <laughs> That's why I get to stand here. Thank you. Any further comments? Uh, further questions? Comments? Hearing none. All in favor of Article 30, please say aye. 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 Opposed? We got a simple majority on that one. I'm going to call it unanimous. Thank you. Article 31. We're going to jump into this, but Senior Tax Work Off Program, Mass General Law, Chapter 59, Section 5K. To see if the town will vote to accept the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 59, Section 5K, to establish a senior work-off abatement program administered by the town manager, where seniors provide services to the community at an hourly rate no higher than the state minimum wage, and their earnings, their earnings are credited to reduce their property tax bills, said program to become effective July 1, 2024, and to adjust the exemption by one, allowing an approved representative for persons physically unable to provide such services to the town or... Two, allowing the maximum reduction of the real property tax bill in a given tax year as provided in Mass General Law 59, Section 5K, as may be amended from time to time, or take any action therein or in relation thereto. Mr. Moderator. Mr. Hood. I move that the town vote to accept the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 59, Section 5K, to establish a senior work off abatement program previously accepted by the town vote Oh, sorry, by vote of town meeting in 2012 and administered by the town manager, where seniors provide services to the community at an hourly rate no higher than the state minimum wage, and their earnings are credited to reduce their tax, their property tax bills, said program to become effective July 1st, 2024, and to adjust the exemption by, one, allowing an approved representative for persons physically unable to provide such services to the town, or two, allow the maximum reduction of the real property tax bill in a given year as provided by Mass General Law Chapter 59 Section 5K, currently $2,000, as may be amended from time to time, as contained in Article 31 and read by the moderator. Seconded. Thank you for the second, Ms. Livingston. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Article 31 passes unanimously. Mr. Mr. Hood. Moderator. I'm sorry. Oh, are you? Are we ready? Are you <laughs> Whatever you guys worked out. I, I had worked something out with Mr. Hood, but I'm ready to go with, when you are. I make a motion to adjourn. Uh, Ms. Livingston, I'm going to ask for one thing. What? I'm going to ask your forbearance, and I'm asking forbearance. This evening is Mr. Hood's last meeting as a select board, as a member of the, of the Ayer Select Board. He has given well over a decade of service to this town on lots of communities. I would just like to give him a hand. Thank you very much. I appreciate His last you select board meeting is May 7th. Everybody show up. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your indulgence. Ms. Livingston, have you something to say? I make a motion to adjourn. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. You <laughs> stole my thunder. <laughs>